so this is the place. Your studio. It's my studio, yeah. It's a real man cave. Yep. For Hancock, it's a refuge. What is it like for you to be in this room? Is this, is this sanctuary? Is it, do all the ideas just come flowing when you're underneath the ceiling? Well, the cool thing is it's in my house. <laughs> <laughs> the short and commute. I can be, I can be, yeah, short commute. It's where the jazz icon reveals his inner kid in a candy store. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wow. If I had one of these in my office, I would never get out of it. <laughs> well, that happens. <laughs> that happens here, too. <laughs> Upstairs in the living room, the stage is unplugged. Just Hancock and the piano. I took my shot. <laughs> yeah. The first thing I can think of that really hooked me was my second piano teacher, Mrs. Jordan. And I auditioned for her. And she said, oh, you read very well. And then she said, let me play something for you. She played Chopin with all the feeling. And I was so moved by that. I said, can you teach me how to play like that? She said, I can try. <laughs> what is the best song you've ever composed? Maybe, uh... Maiden Voyage. Did it take you to compose that song? Uh, the way it happened was uh, I was asked to do a, a song for a, a commercial, a TV commercial. Um, You're kidding. Yeah. This came from a commercial? Yeah, it was yeah. for you... Men's Clown. No. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. So, But Maiden Voyage wasn't used for a commercial, was it? Yeah. So they asked you to, to, to do to a To do a song for a commercial. The scene was... Um, a sophisticated jazz club, you know, where everybody was like dressed up in hip clothing. The chairs were high back chairs. Now, I don't know any jazz club that's like that. <laughs> so I don't know where they got that from. And that's a, some altered reality or something. Right. But Maiden Voyage was nearly lost. I was working with the Miles Davis band at that time. And we had to fly to, to California. We were living in New York. And on the plane, I was having a conversation with Wayne Shorter. And this rhythm hit me. And I, and I, and I grabbed a napkin from the flight attendant and wrote the rhythm down. And then we landed, and I lost the, the napkin. <laughs> and I didn't remember what the rhythm was. The melody came back to him during a recording session. This time, he wrote it down on a paper that wouldn't get lost. Most people don't think about LA as being a jazz town. Is that a challenge for you as the director, the jazz director for the LA Phil? I'm just trying to put together um, packages uh, in the programming that can be compelling so that there will be a real real audience there. That's an 18,000 seater, you know, the, the Hollywood Bowl. Before the show, we met up with him backstage. How are you doing, Harvey? Great, how are you? Good to see Good you see again. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along with yeah. saxophonist Wayne Shorter, who he's been in the musical trenches with for almost half a century. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you two here. I mean, you're, you're both jazz icons. You're jazz greats. And you've been in dressing rooms like this all around the world, you know, hundreds if not thousands of times probably together. What happens in this moment before you perform? I mean, wh wh what are your thoughts? Well, uh, b because I've been practicing Buddhism now for almost 40 years and so has Wayne. One of the things we do before we, uh, before we often we do before we play is that 
we do the evening prayer. It's a ritual Hancock has never allowed to be filmed until now. And you do this before you perform because? Because I want the true me to be out there performing. <laughs> and this is a way to bring out the true me. An hour later, it's showtime. And just two months later, there he is at rehearsal with Los Angeles Philharmonic conductor Gustavo Dudamel. <laughs> that would be Thanks. fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rehearsal is seamless. There's a little, a few little spices I put in there. <laughs> it's okay. And just a few hours later, the two titans of the LA music scene join forces. I'm Michael Oakley for SoCal Connected.